So I am guessing if you are looking for a KTM 690 or 701, you might have exploring in mind, but wonder if it can do single track or technical riding in between, how well it does on the road and if it is even reliable, how does it do on mountain passes on really rocky terrain? Well, I assure you, all of this will be answered, and although I do have the A701, I ride with a few buddies who has the KTM 690 Enduro, but this video will only be about the KTM 690 Enduro. Another adventure ride! remember doing a few advanced single tracks on my TE250i which we considered small bike territory. Thinking to myself, can the KTM 690 Enduro actually follow us through this rocky, crazy single track? And I do not mean flat and flowy, I am talking about tight switchbacks at a minimum 25% grade. So to give you the answer, I tried keeping up with him on tighter single track on my TE250i and I could not. So I couldn't get footage really of him on the single track unfortunately so here I am with a 220 pound bike versus a 330 pound 690. Sure I have been riding for under a year but this really tells you you don't need a TE250i for tight single track unless you're a very advanced rider and want to go really fast. The KTM 690 Enduro is all you need. Now, when it came to a really rocky 25% grade single track, the stock gearing was unable to keep up. Switch it to a 1348 and now we are talking. How about a 32% grade hill climb? Well, yes, the KTM was able to tackle it until the power was lost upway with stock gearing. Slap it with a 1348 and all of a sudden 32% grade turned into a highway for the KTM 690 Enduro. On the right there. It's almost like a single track that goes right next to that thing. That is steep up there. Whoa, shit. I don't think my KLX can uh, can do that hill. His KTM 690 is geared way too high, I think, for for this steep hill. Um, I think it still has stock gearing. So if his stock gearing had issue doing that, I think my KLX 250 definitely would not climb that thing. So right now, one of the first things I notice is like how light and flickable it feels. All right. First thing you notice is just that instant power, man. Wow. So it definitely feels more light, more flickable. Oh, does want to kind of stall out easier. All right. I got, definitely got to keep the revs up so it doesn't stall out. I'm sure lower gearing will help because I think this is definitely stock. And the front end definitely makes it seem a lot lighter, like the gas tank in the rear, which is nice. I wouldn't say this is new rider, new bike friendly on like these type of trails though. This thing can definitely, uh, get you going for sure suspensions are about the same on the KLX and this guy brakes are definitely nice so it could be because just a rem reminder guys I'm 220 pounds but oh yeah this thing has power The one thing I definitely notice about this guy is um, just how long the gear is. That's definitely nice. It feels nice. 
engine braking is not even that bad there's barely out no engine braking almost like a two-stroke i would say <laughs> delivery is just smooth on this thing even on third gear it just wants to go I have it on third gear and this thing is just cruising but overall I'm gonna say this bike is really comfortable it's gonna be really comfortable on the road you can automatically tell so the only negative I have to say about this bike is the stock gearing, that's pretty obvious. Great for normal forest roads and moderately steep trails, without a doubt it can definitely do technical trails but as soon as the steep grade, I'm going to say my guess is 20% and up, it definitely wants to stall out, stall out fast and does not give much of a warning. Swap out the gears and that would definitely help tons, but you might lose your top speed of cruising at 80 miles an hour on the freeway. Now I must admit, the 690 is just the great all around bike, it could definitely handle highway speeds and you could definitely tour on this bike, but it won't have the comfort of a street bike. To me, the comfort is manageable on the highway, but you get great off-road bike in return. That can do it all within the exception of gnarly single track, unless you really like torturing yourself. Anyhow, I hope this review helps somewhat, and if you guys want to see us tag along on the 701 and 690, just go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button, and I'll see you guys on my next video.